We all know that food and the snacks you can bring with you to the climbing wall are really important for your performance. And today we have some of your most common climbing or crag snacks in front of us. And I've also got Ed Smith joining us, our nutritionist, to talk about what the best snacks are. And we're gonna line these up in different categories to see what you should be taking to the climbing wall and what's gonna give you the best boost of performance. So we're going to review the snacks that I've bought with me today um, from the kind of angle of what effect it could have on performance, uh, what effects if any on health, so in terms of nutrient quality, and then also in terms of practicality, so con considerations in terms of uh, taking it with you along to the crag or the climbing wall um, or perhaps even buying it um, in these places as well. Okay Ed, so let's start with the drinks in the middle. We've got a few different types here. This is an isotonic sports drink. We've got an energy drink. So this one's gonna give us caffeine and then some chocolate milk as well. Let's start with the sports drink. What are we gonna get out of this and why are we taking this drink to the gym? Okay, so we know that fluid requirements are an important con consideration uh, around maintaining and sustaining performance across a session. Um, there are going to be times where water is, is potentially not enough, uh, particularly if the session goes beyond 90 minutes. We want to be thinking about carbohydrate provision. Um, we want to be thinking about potentially electrolytes as well. Okay, so these sports drinks often claim they're better for hydration than water alone. Is that true? And if so, why, why is it better than water? Um, so to some extent, yes. So when we exercise and obviously to cool our bodies down, um, we sweat and we do get some sodium loss with that. Um, sodium is an electrolyte and it plays an important role in maintaining fluid balance. So the inclusion of some uh, electrolytes, this in theory can improve fluid retention, um, which of course is a good thing. Now it also has uh, glucose. Now glucose is the uh, most kind of rapidly available uh, fuel source for the body. Yeah. And so much so that actually glucose is used as the reference value for glycemic index. So this is quite literally a sports product that's formulated for sport. So in many ways it's, you know, it's convenient. Okay, so Ed, what's a glycemic index? And if it's high with this sports drink, is that a good thing for my performance? Okay, so glycemic index is kind of context specific. So it's actually um, a unit of the rate and magnitude of the glycemic response, i.e. how quickly is that glucose or carbohydrate absorbed and ready available um, to use by the body. Now we want a fast response if it's during exercise, because yeah. if it's during exercise, we will have already used some of the carbohydrate available to us stored in our muscles, and we're looking to replenish that as quickly as possible or provide at least uh, you know, a readily available source of fuel. So this is good. It's gonna give us sugar and quickly, and that's our fuel source. Um, it's obviously going to help with hydration because the electrolytes, those are two cons. Is there anything else this is good for and is there anything it's not so good at? So you could argue that in some respects, actually, the fact that it is high GI, um, you know, yeah. you wouldn't want to rely on this as your only fuel source. You know, you've got to consider, um, you know, fuel needs across a, a, you know, a, a larger duration of time. So if, if your session was, say, for six hours, is it a case of having a Lucozade every hour? Is that a practical thing to do? Or are you yeah. going to want something that's a little bit kind of slower to digest and to kind of drip feed the body with, um, with, okay. with the nutrients it needs? So big day at the gym or multi-pitch climbing, trad climbing, whatever, big day out. This is probably that fast available energy. But yeah. actually, if big day out, maybe you want something else on this table, which is going to give that slower release of carbohydrates. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's move on to the next drink then, which is energy drink. We all know this one's got caffeine in. Um, my first question is how much caffeine's in it and is it any any better or worse than I've got a cup of tea here, you've got a coffee. Yep. Like what, what's going to win on this table? Yeah so in terms of the caffeine content it's likely that the coffee that I've made here, um, so from a fresh ground uh, coffee bean with basically a double espresso shot you'd be, I'd expect that to sit somewhere in the region of maybe 100 to 150 milligrams of caffeine. The Red Bull is at 80 milligrams. The cup of tea, again, it varies depending on the, the strength of the product, the length of the brew, um, but you could be looking at anywhere between maybe 20, even up to maybe 60, 80 if it's particularly strong. 
So you're not looking necessarily at a very high caffeine product here. Okay, so tea is the lowest. Yeah. Then an energy drink, and a coffee is actually going to be much more. Maybe even double if it's a strong one. That's right. Yeah, this is a double espresso, um, and that's not an uncommon thing to buy. You know, if you get an americano, often they will use a double. Okay, right. And caffeine helps with performance. Is that fair to say. Yeah, it's definitely fair to say. So caffeine is one of the most well-researched ergogenic aids um, for, a, for a number of reasons, really. We know that it has effects on our cognitive processing speed, um, our ability to, you know, to focus, make decisions quickly, that kind of thing. Um, but also in terms of sports performance, we know that it can influence our rate of perceived exertion, so how, how hard we are finding a particular uh, task. And that in itself is, um, I guess, an important uh, performance enhancing feature because if we're able to feel like we're actually working less than we really are, we can then, push harder. then we can push that a little bit harder, yeah. Nice. So is there anything other than the caffeine in this, this drink which is good? Has it also got sugar in? It has got sugar, yes. It's got sucrose, which is a glucose fructose blend. Um, and again, it's very readily available fuel sources. Um, actually not too far off the amount you would find in, in this drink. So it lacks the electrolytes, and I'd say another kind of potential downside is the fact that it is carbonated, so it is a fizzy drink. Um, so perhaps not the best to kind of sip on between sets, but rather if you're having a prolonged rest, maybe. So you know that Red Bull can often get a pretty bad rep, and I think that's just because of the badge. We look at this big company and we think it's a bit evil, but actually the drink inside that can is pretty good. It's got caffeine, more than a cup of tea. It's probably cheaper than a coffee. It's got our energy, it's got our sugars in there, which is gonna help energize the session. So it's actually a pretty good drink. Again, context specific, you know? Okay. So as a kind of drink that you'd maybe have from time to time to really boost those crucial sessions, yeah. um, maybe when you're you know, projecting, you need that extra boost. You could argue, well, it's, it's convenient, you know, you can't always take a big flask of, uh, of coffee. Um, but you've got that little drink that you can pack into a bag. In terms of yeah. health benefits, like yeah. it's, it's not necessarily that bad. Not necessarily, no. The odd, the odd Red Bull isn't going to cause any issues in a, you know, in a he healthy adult population. Cool. Overconsumption is a different matter altogether. Yeah. yeah, but you could probably do that with any of these drinks here. Exactly. Okay, so let's move on to the chocolate milk. Um, why is this one on the table? Uh, I know definitely this is what I would consider more of like a post-workout drink because I'm seeing a protein content in there as well. Um, so what's the main benefit of the chocolate milk? It's exactly that. So it, it brings to the table um, the addition of some protein, some high quality protein, which can help kickstart recovery. Um, so, it, you know, it, again, it is uh, pretty good at rehydration. Uh, rehydration. Um, it comes with the added benefit of being a kind of more natural product. Um, there are naturally occurring B vitamins in there, there's calcium. So in terms of overall nutrient quality, it's probably one of the best on the table, really. Um, it doesn't have to be this kind of branded kind of UHT milk. The reason I've bought that one today is because it is an option if you are um, taking it along to the crag with you, obviously, a normal fresh milk product would need refrigerating. Uh, with a UHT product, um, it only needs refrigerating once it's open, so you can kind of keep that out of direct sunlight in your bag and, uh, and maybe sip on that towards the end of a session. So with the chocolate milk, we've got the protein, which is gonna help with recovery. We've got vitamins and minerals in there. We've got calcium, um, vitamin B2, and we've also got the sugars in there, the energy, which is, you know, if you drink it during the session, that's gonna help fuel it or replenish carbohydrates at the end. So it looks like a pretty good drink in comparison to these. Where, where in the session are you taking these? Which, which is your go-to or your favorite? Yeah, I mean, it's unlikely you'd plan a session where you're having all three of these, but yeah. you know, to put these into kind of better context, you'd potentially have your Red Bull at the very start of a session, really. Obviously, it's got the caffeine. It's gonna take 45 minutes to an hour, really, for that to peak in the bloodstream. Doesn't make a lot of sense to drink a Red Bull at the very end of a session. Um, and also in terms of the time of day as well. So Red Bull, with it having the caffeine content, probably less appropriate. So the, the time of the day in, uh, in terms of consumption is an important consideration as well when having a caffeinated drink. Um, you know, obviously ideally, first thing in the morning, give you that kind of wake up boost, and perhaps early in the afternoon as well, but anything later than 4 p.m. and you do run the risk of the caffeine actually uh, interfering with sleep quality. So Lucasade would be the choice for uh, kind of during a session. Obviously it's providing the, the energy, the rapidly available um, 
kind of glucose, the electrolytes for rehydration. Other than that, it's not providing a, a great deal else. And then we've got the, the milk drink, the chocolate milk. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be the kind of chocolate variety. Um, people often say, is there anything unique about chocolate? Not necessarily. Could be normal milk, um, but there is a, a slightly higher carbohydrate content in those that are flavored. So this is what I would highlight as being the kind of best end of session uh, drink here, obviously for the protein and to kickstart the recovery. Yeah, I don't think I would be um, necking a bottle of milk just before getting on a route. And I might sit in the stomach a bit wrong, that one. Yeah, that's right. So it's gonna take a little bit longer to digest as well. Cool. Right, Ed, before we start, rating these best to worst for climbing. Let's just go through these snacks here, one at a time, and tell me a little bit of, I don't know, their pros and cons, any unique qualities we're gonna get out of actually selecting one of these over the other. Okay, so, um, I mean, I like Serene. It's one of my personal favorites because I find that it's really easy to kind of dose carbohydrates. So you can actually buy like a pre-sliced product. Yep. And I know that two slices of that is gonna give me roughly 30 grams of carbohydrates. Um, I guess one of the downsides of buying a product like off the shelf rather than making one is that it's going to contain preservatives um, and potential other kind of artificial ingredients. And also, um, I've known to get quite sticky fingers after yeah. eating it as well. It's They're not a problem great. if you're at the wall where you can go and wash your hands in a sink. Um, but yeah, if you're on your project, the last thing you want is to be uh, yeah getting sticky fingers or not great for friction. Not great for friction. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah. Um, so the, the bananas, it, it's going to win overall in terms of being the most natural product, uh, potentially having the highest kind of nutri uh, nutrient qualities, um, you know, readily available source of carbohydrates. Possible downside really is it's very easily damaged. So if, if you're, you know, shoving your stuff into a bag, um, you know, your banana might end up not actually being all that edible <laughs> by the time that you get it out. Or covering all of your climbing gear. Or covering all your, all your gear, yeah. So that is a potential downside there. And also in particularly cold weather. Um, so if you're out in kind of minus temperatures, uh, bananas aren't that appealing. I've never had a cold banana. If you've had a cold banana before, you have to let us know what it's like in the comments. <laughs> yeah, I've had one. It's not, it's, they're not great. Um, and then with the granola raw, kind of we've got to use the cliff bar here, really. Um, yep, again, it's, it's kind of pre-packaged, which is a pro and a con in that we've got this portion um, that we know is providing a certain amount of energy um, and carbohydrates. So for, on the convenience front, it's a good choice. But again, it's, you know, it's a manufactured product. Um, you can make your own and uh, use kind of more whole food ingredients. So, I mean, the really, the kind of downside to the, to the bar, I guess, is um, you know, the cost of, of buying these. They're not, they're not cheap. And one of the pros is obviously the convenience. With the sweets, they're a good source of energy and not much else. Yeah. Uh, hygiene might be even a consideration. Um, you know, do you really want to be kind of handling your, your, your food with your fingertips after you've had a session indoors and used fingerboards and climbing holds that other people have? So there is that as a consideration. Um, and again, packaging. But yeah, biggest con there is that it is very refined and isn't going to provide much else other than energy. Yeah. And then in terms of the nuts, actually really good in terms of nutrient quality. Um, protein as well, decent source of protein, um, but not much in the way of readily available energy. So there's no carbohydrates essentially or very little carbohydrates um, in mixed nuts. A good option though, let's say you are following a very low carbohydrate diet or in fact keto. Um, you know, the considerations change altogether. And in fact, you probably won't be looking at any of these products on the table beyond the mixed nuts, in which case it is a good choice. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's your only go to option at that point. Yeah. Nice. I think let's go and start. Should we just do the, the snacks to start with? And we're going to order them best to worst. And we're going to do it for three different categories, convenience, yep. energy availability. And then we were saying, is it nutrient? Sort kind of, of nutrient quality, yeah. Nutrient what else quality. it brings to the table other than energy, really? Okay. So let's start with convenience. I think I'm guessing you were mentioning this as one of the most convenient. Or yeah. You also are a fan of the Taurine. It's a good all-rounder, um, the, the the Cliff Bar, um, as well as the the Serene as well. So I mean, they're all these are all relatively convenient. Um, but yeah, in terms of having that kind of, if you're having like a dosed kind of approach, really, to your carbohydrate intake. 
yep. than and something that's, that's like this. So is that, that's number one? Yeah, I mean, you could even say that these are going to be roughly similar, I suppose. Um, and then, no, I don't know, even nuts. <laughs> is there anything wrong with nuts in terms of convenience? Not so in terms of convenience, are you just saying they're all equal? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, this one's got to get a bit smushed, doesn't it? Yeah, potentially, yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, maybe, maybe we'll anger some people when we, we throw the banana to the end of the pile in that one. <laughs> so in terms of convenience, we're saying actually yeah, I mean, the same? I, I, so I chose these products for the very reason that they are all commercially available. You know, if you can't buy these at a center, you know, you can easily buy Cliff Bar, maybe some fruit um, yeah. or malt loaf or similar. You can get them in a supermarket on, on your way or on the way to the crag. So I guess in many ways they are all convenient it's the practicality side of things, really. And I think that changes more so with, with the drinks, but um, yeah. So when it comes to the drinks, what's, I mean, convenience, again, they all seem pretty convenient, apart from maybe the milk's gonna be a bit sitting heavy in your stomach. So maybe that one goes towards the end. Yeah, and again, the considerations around it being either a fresh milk product um, or not, and whether right, it needs- Refrigerating it, yeah. Refrigerating, yeah. But yeah, in and terms then, of convenience, they're all pretty good. You mentioned this one's carbonated, and that's not maybe the best if you're actually thirsty. Um, yeah. And so, well, does this one sit at number one? You're number one, yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. So in terms of it being a carbonated drink, um, you know, you're not going to rely on that really to, to, to meet your hydration needs. It's quite a small drink as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the Lucaside comes out on top there. Okay, there's the convenience lineup in terms of order. Let's move to energy availability, like how much sugar or, or ergogenic aid, our performance boost, what are we going to get out of it? Let's line it up. Let's start with the drinks this time. One to three, what's your go-to drink for energy availability? So these are actually already in the, in the correct order. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not gonna do any Same reorder again. in there. Yeah, um, primarily glucose, which as I mentioned before, is, is the kind of fastest absorbing uh, type of carbohydrate, uh, followed by the sucrose, um, that is the, the, the predominant sugar there as well. Um, and then we've got lactose. Yeah. Um, in the uh, in the milk product, we've also got the fat and protein to consider as well. So that is actually going to slow down the rate of absorption. Okay, right, that's good to know. So the other consideration when we're talking about performance, that was energy availability. But this one's got caffeine in, which the other two don't. But we kind of mentioned if you just had a cup of tea or a coffee before going to the, the climbing wall or, or the crag, you mentioned it's like a, an hour, ninety minutes for that caffeine. Probably protein. a little short, forty-five to an hour. Yeah. Okay, so. Potentially, if you're not a coffee or tea drinker, maybe this takes the lead. If you're looking for caffeine to give you that boost, would you say that's fair? Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, you're pretty limited really in terms of uh, sources of caffeine if you're not a tea or coffee drinker. Um, and that comes down to buying just basically powdered caffeine, which I think is, is a risky thing to do. Um, because unless you've got pharmaceutical scales, it's gonna be very difficult really to get the, the dosage right. Yeah. Um, you can buy the, the pills as well, so the caffeine pills or capsules. Um, but again, they're typically a bit higher. So like generally they come in 200 milligrams. Uh, okay. Pro Plus is actually a lot lower, uh, that's at 50 milligrams. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an option there. Okay, so that's the lineup for the drinks. Energy availability for the snacks. Yep. I'm, I'm thinking this one's got to come in front. Yeah, it's going to be high, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's basically the, the primary ingredient in these sweets is glucose syrup. Um, okay. So that's going to come That's first. number one. Number one. The nuts, unfortunately, is going to be at the bottom. Now, it seems kind of odd because technically speaking, in terms of energy density, it is, a lot there. in fact, probably the highest. Um, but most of that, if not all of that energy is coming from fat. Um, so then it's going to be probably a tie between these two actually, or it's gonna be fairly similar, I think, between these two. And is that because two. of the fructose content in there, the fruit sugars? Yeah, so the additional, uh, the additional sugar added to the serene is gonna give that slight edge. Um, they're both sources of fiber though, so. And we said that slows down the energy availability or the absorption. The absorption, yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, yeah, I think this one is gonna be quite, quite close. I think you'd be splitting hairs to, to have these either way around. And then Cliff Bar's coming. Cliff Bar's going to become down. slightly, slightly lower down potentially. Yeah. But we also mentioned like that that the slower release of carbohydrates could be beneficial if you're talking about a longer session. So are we saying even the Cliff Bar could potentially be a better suited choice 
for those longer sessions. Yeah, I mean, in theory, the rate of absorption only really needs to match the rate at which you're using the carbohydrate. Okay. So yeah. if it's a very intense session, you are pushing yourself to your limits, you know, repeatedly, essentially, kind of repeated bouts of maximal efforts, mm -hmm. you're going to deplete muscle glycogen stores at a faster rate, and therefore you're going to need to replenish them at a faster rate as well, particularly okay. if you want that session to, you know, to be prolonged. Um, so really, again, it's one of these annoying things where I'm going to say it's context specific, yeah. because how often do you go and train, you know, kind of flat out, essentially? Yeah, so maybe um, a hard training session somewhere up here. Yeah. But mooching around the crag on a sunny day, maybe like even maybe even the mix mats is, is something to throw with. them in there as well. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you've got to think of it from a health perspective as well. Um, yeah. Yes, some of your nutrient needs are going to be met with a banana, but, you know, the mixed nuts. Um, you know, good source of, of fats there as well. So, I mean, the only other thing that I would say is it comes down to the quantity that's of kind of realistic to consume during a session as well. Yeah, before this, I was like, well, I'd, I'd never eat more than a handful of nuts. And then Ed was like, oh, I could definitely just do a whole packet. Of nuts. I could easily do a whole <laughs> packet of nuts. Yeah, not a, not a bother. In fact, any one of these really, I could do the whole packet of. But yeah. Um, yeah, in terms of the quantity as well that might be required. So if, if you are having a very long session and you do need to, um, you know, dose carbohydrates every hour for three, four hours, you know, how practical is it to, you know, keep eating bananas or keep eating Haribo, you know, so. Yeah, how many bananas can you take? How to the yeah, exactly. So having a, um, perhaps even a range of snacks is a good idea, yeah. um, particularly if you're going to be out at a crag all day. Um, I often say to people, just pack what you can fit, yeah. even if you don't think you'll eat it, um, as long as you can take it back home with you, nothing's wasted. Because you never really know until you're actually out there what you might even fancy. So like your appetite is going to play play yeah. a role in your choices. Um, and yes, I have been out all day before and been stuck with something that I just wished I hadn't <laughs> taken yeah, yeah. out. Um, so yeah, having a range of stuff is going to be definitely important for those longer days. Nice. Uh, the, so we've ordered these in terms of energy availability. The last one was nutrient quality yes nutrient quality okay so again snacks in front of us let's start with these i think we were, were already saying that this probably is the best one That's the yeah one. the banana's gonna go up there isn't it so okay. we're gonna have the banana um we're gonna want the milk up there as well and we're gonna have the nuts so i mean these are all good in their own right so it's very difficult really to you know create a, a hierarchy here um and then going down this list, so we've got typically some nuts added to the kind of granola bars. Yeah. Um, there's nothing else being being brought to the table with the Haribo. Yeah. Again, purely energy provision. Now, the Red Bull, interestingly, does actually have some B vitamins. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and a little bit of taurine, which is um, a fairly potent antioxidant. So okay. that's not and so that terrible. And is good for recovery. It's probably not in a quantity that's sufficient enough to have any major impact, but you know, it's there basically. It's better than the yeah, yeah, yeah than the yeah, Haribo, essentially. Okay. And then perhaps the, the serene going somewhere in the middle. Okay, so this is what's better for you in terms of health benefits. Yeah. Okay. And like I said, with these ones you could you could do this and it'd still be yeah, roughly still right. Roughly the same. It's worth mentioning. Other snacks are available. This is just typically what we see at the climbing wall or at the crag. Please let us know what your favorite crag snacks are and why. That's it from us today. Thank you, Ed, for joining us and talking us through some of the available snack options. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.